Hey, welcome everyone. I hope you are doing fine and welcome to this wonderful session on introduction to derivatives. Okay, this is really the basics of derivatives and I feel that this is the most important chapter because it introduces all about the basics, what is needed to understand derivatives to, to make sure that you understand all the later chapters that is coming in this particular book. Okay, so derivatives, it forms a major component in every finance book. And before we move on, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be uploading lots of videos for FRM and CFA. Okay, so make sure that you do that. There's also a link in the description below of our Telegram channel. Make sure that you join that as well. We'll be uploading lots of materials on our Telegram as well. So what are we learning today? We'll be talking about what is derivatives, what are the features and uses of derivatives. We also be looking at the OTC markets. What exactly is the over the counter markets? And we're going to be comparing that with exchanges. Okay. And also in this particular video, we will be comparing the different types of derivatives. That is the options, the forward contract and the futures contract. Okay. So what is derivative? A derivative is an instrument whose value is actually dependent upon the value of some other underlying assets. Okay, the, de the definition is quite confusing, but let me just uh, break this thing down for you. So we can have a, a derivative contract on a stock. Let's say we can have a derivative contract on IBM stock and, and the value of this derivative contract is actually dependent upon the value of this particular IBM stock. Okay, so so the price fluctuations in IBM stock will also lead to price fluctuations in this particular derivative contract. Okay, we can also have a derivative contract on a commodity like let's say for example oil. Okay, so the prices of oil going up and down will also lead to prices of this particular derivative contract going up and down. So basically what I'm trying to say is that this derivative contract is dependent upon this particular underlying asset prices. Okay. So, and finally we can also have a derivative contract on currencies. Let, let's say dollars. So now the price, the fluctuations of this particular derivative contract is dependent upon the price fluctuations of dollar. So essentially what we are saying is that the derivative contract, it does not have its own value. It derives its value from the underlying assets. Now the underlying assets can be a stock, it can be a commodity or it can be currencies. It can be even weather. Yes, we will learn about uh, weather derivatives in uh, later chapters. Derivative contract does exist on weather. So that is derivatives. Now you must be wondering why do we need a derivative contract in the very first place? Why not simply trade on these underlying assets? I can trade directly in the stock market uh, for the IBM share. I can trade on oil directly. I can even trade on currencies directly, right? Why do we need it in the very first place? Well, the answer lies here in reducing the risk when it comes to uh, when it comes to these individual commodities or individual uh, instruments, we can manage our risk in a better way with the help of a derivative contract. So I'm going to give you an example. So let's say let's take an example here that you are a portfolio manager and we are sitting today at day zero and one month from now you would be receiving dollars from United States. Okay, you live in India and you would be uh, receiving dollars from the US. So you're not sure what's going to be the value one month from now. You're not sure about that. Okay. It can lead to a profit. It can lead to a loss, but you're not sure about that. But you know today what is the price. Okay. So in order to reduce this risk at this point in time, one month from now, we get into a derivative contract today and we can fix the price so that we know whether it's going to be a profit or a loss or it's going to be a break even. We can fix the price today with the help of derivative contract. So in this way, as a risk manager, you can actually manage your exposures, what, what, what you will be receiving or what you will have to pay 
so on and so forth and this is one of the reasons why we use derivative contract to manage our financial risk okay similarly we can do for any commodity a wheat farmer can get into a derivative contract to get best prices for his produce uh, the if you feel that this particular stock is going to go up you can take advantage with the help of derivative contract you can even uh, if you feel that the price is going to go down you can use derivative contract to manage your risk okay so this is why derivatives exist in the market and why we trade not only on the standalone underlying assets but also uh, derivatives contract which really helps us in reducing our exposures okay now so moving on to the linear and non-linear derivatives so in the next video that i will be uploading i will uh, take care of the payoffs like what exactly is the profit and loss in our derivatives transaction so so we're going to be having a look at that but just for now in in this particular slide i'm going to explain you a little bit about linear and non-linear derivatives so for example if i draw my profit and loss okay so if if i get a straight line if i get if i see my profit and loss in a straight line okay then I call this as a linear derivative okay and and again if I draw my uh, payoff diagram and if I see something it's, it's it, it, it is linear for a certain time but then it takes a non-linear path okay then something which is non-linear is referred to as non-linear derivatives okay so linear derivatives they have the payoffs that is directly related to the value of the underlying so if the value goes so if the underlying value goes up the payoffs or the profit and loss goes up but non-linear derivatives they have non-linear payoff in relation to the underlying assets so follows a linear relation for a certain point in time but it can also take a non-linear path and that is why it's said to be a non-linear derivatives okay moving on traditionally derivatives was used to be traded on an open outcry system now this is a system wherein people used to stand and they used to shout they used to give hand signals and then they used to start the trading okay so this is something the very old system that used to exist but in today's world electronic trading has replaced this open outcry system so if you want to trade derivatives today uh, electronic trading can be done so now the main question is if you want to trade on the derivatives market where do you go well there are two options that you can choose the very first one is the exchanges okay uh, now these exchanges are like wherein you can buy and sell uh, the derivatives contract so if you talk about the US we have the New York Stock Exchange we have the Nasdaq and similarly in India we have the NSE and uh, the, the Bombay Stock Exchange so these are the exchanges you can go to the exchanges and you can uh, get into a derivatives contract now what's special about exchanges is that they have standardized contracts okay and which has been defined by the exchange so the exchange has already defined what will be the terms and conditions of the contract so we're gonna look into this in few slides you can also go to the over-the-counter market also known as OTC markets now this OTC market is it's actually an alternative to exchange market so so we can go to any dealer and what's special about the OTC markets is that we, we can directly contact the counterparty and we can decide our own terms okay so terms and conditions is something that so both the counterparties can actually decide the terms and condition of the contract so they are pretty much customizable derivatives contract okay if you want a standardized contract you can go to an exchange they do not have customized contract but if you want to have your own contract to be customized the specifications the trading place the delivery place so on and so forth you can go to the OTC market now the OTC market trades are typically larger in size than exchanges now most of the retail investors they go to exchanges many large financial institutions banks uh, fund managers they go to over-the-counter markets so that they can have a customizable contract 
depending upon their needs now we're going to be talking about exchanges and otc markets there are two chapters that are dedicated to just these two concepts okay so we'll be talking a lot in detail in the next two chapters now talking about the advantages of otc trading the terms as i said it can be customized so many large corporations they prefer otc trading the second advantage of otc is that new regulations have been introduced now so that actually protects the both the buyer and the seller rights so this is very much important regulations bring more transparency to the overall trading the major disadvantage of otc trading is that it has more credit risk than exchange trading now when we talk about exchanges we see that they have such mechanisms in place that reduces the overall credit risk for both the buyers and the sellers but when it comes to otc trading the credit risk is much on a higher scale okay so this is quite a disadvantage of otc trading so now we talk about the third derivative and that is the options contract so when we talk about the options contract it is one of the most widely used derivative contracts in the entire financial market so so very popular and uh, very interesting as well so it's pretty much complicated when we compare it with the forwards and the futures but we're gonna go step by step and i will explain it in a very simplified manner so that you understand the very basics right now okay so an option contract is a contract between two counterparties that gives one counterparty the right okay now here's the difference between the forwards and the futures so what it does is that it gives one counterparty the right but not the obligation to buy or sell an asset at an agreed upon price within a certain time period okay so i'm going to explain this don't worry options are traded both on the exchanges and in the otc markets as well this is another difference so let's try to understand the options contract here so we have the long that is who is buying the options contract the short who is selling the options contract okay now in options terminology it is also known as the options buyer so if i'm buying an option i am also referred to as the options buyer and if i'm selling the options then i will then i'm also referred as the options writer now on the exam if you see something like someone has written an option that means someone someone is selling the option okay so if i'm writing an option contract that means i'm selling okay make sure that you remember these terminologies that uh, this is very important about the options okay so options writer is referred to as the seller so let's suppose a very simple example both the long and the short they meet at time zero they the long actually buys the options contract and the short is selling the options contract now what is happening here is that at the end that is at maturity in the future they both meet together okay now here the short is obligated to honor the contract obligations okay short will have to buy or sell no matter if it is profitable for him to do so on the other hand now long has the power to choose at this point in time that is at expiration whether he wants to exercise the options or not whether he wants to get into the contract or simply exit the contract yes this is quite possible now as compared to the futures and the forward contract both the counterparties are obligated to honor the contract obligations at time t no one has a choice but with the options contract the long has the right to buy or sell at point t now this counterparty long will buy when it is profitable for the long to do so and he will sell when it is profitable for him to sell under this options contract yes so this is the major difference between the forwards and the futures and so this is why an options contract it gives one counterparty the power to choose at the end of the expiration to get into the contract or just to exit to take profits or just simply quit now remember that the long is given the power in options contract so for now this this power or this right to buy is not coming for free he has to pay a premium to the short over here at the end the short is facing a risk so to compensate the short party here the premium is given to the short 
okay so in in futures the premium was deposited here by both the long and short to the exchange okay but right at the beginning in options the long will give the premium to the short okay and short will take a risk at the end and long will have the right to either get into the contract if it is profitable or simply exit okay so this is why uh, it's known as the options contract it's giving an option to the long to get into the contract or simply quit at the maturity so hopefully you get the idea now now in the world of options contract we have only two types okay the first one is the call option and the second one is the put options so, so we're going to be looking at in the next uh, slides what exactly is the call options and put options with the help of examples now let's talk about the very first type of options contract and that is referred to as call options okay when we are learning about finance frm cfa mba in finance we will come across options okay and the very first type is the call options so call options it gives you the right to buy the stock or the underlying asset at the exercise price but not the obligation to get into the contract so let's suppose we have uh, two counterparties here now another notation to remember the person who is buying who's long this call option is referred to as long call and the person who's selling the call option is referred to as the short call so suppose you are buying the call option you would be known as the long call and if i am selling the option if i'm the counterparty to your uh, derivatives contract then i'm referred to as the short call as i said in the earlier slide short is also referred to as the writer okay so i will also be referred to as the writer if i'm writing a call option that means i'm selling the call option okay so make sure that you are clear now what happens is so i'm getting this right to buy at the maturity uh, i have this power to choose right so i have to pay something some amount some money to the writer or the short call so what i do is i give the call premium to the short okay i pay him some amount for as a compensation because he's, he's obligated at the end of the contract maturity okay now let's take a very simple example here so suppose based on the research an investor feels that the price of abc corporation will increase over the next six months okay now based on the research this investor feels that this is going to go up okay the price of abc will go up so we have two things here we have a call option on this underlying asset which is abc corporation what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take two scenarios here under this scenario one what i'm doing is i'll simply buy the stock at today and i'll wait for the expiration that is six months the t is six months right so we are waiting till six months and let's see what happens to the price i'm not buying any derivative contract okay it's plain investment on the other hand this is scenario number two what i'm doing is i'm actually buying a call option here okay and we will see at time t that is after six months what happens to our profits and losses okay so so six months call option is available for eight dollars this eight dollars that you see here so this is the premium that the investor needs to pay to the other counterparty who's taking the risk okay so this eight dollars is paid to the short with an exercise price of $80 the exercise price is $80 the stock price currently is $70 and the price of stock after six months is 45 so we are given the price at time t okay so let's take the scenario number one uh, directly buying the stock today the price is 70 so I'm paying $70 here and at time t the stock price at time t is 45 so it has fallen down to 45 so it's a straight loss of 25 dollars okay so it's a loss here of 25 dollars now let's take another scenario of call option 
Now the best thing about the options contract is that you do not have to pay the entire short stock price amount at time zero. You only have to pay the premium amount. So the premium amount is written as C0 which is in our example is $8. Okay. So the long will pay to the short $8. Okay. This is this scenario here and we get into the options contract right today let's uh, so the stock price at time t we are given as 45 after six months the stock price is 45 dollars the exercise price is written as the x okay the exercise price is 80 dollars now since we are in this call option here i have the right to buy something at $80 at the exercise price. Remember the exercise price that I told you? It is the price that at which both the long and short will transact, okay? So it is $80. Now, will I will I buy something for $80 when I can buy the same thing for $45 in the open market? I will not do so, right? So what I will do? I will simply exit this contract whatever that I'm whatever money that I paid at time zero I will only lose that okay so here the loss is only eight dollars so do you see the difference here if I'm not buying an option the stock price actually falls down after six months I face a loss of twenty five dollars Whereas in the same scenario, if my point of view is not right at the end of the expiration, then my loss is only limited to the premium that I pay at time zero. Okay, so this is why it's very useful in the overall financial market and it is one of the popular derivatives that, that we use. Options contract, it gives you an option to choose at the end of the maturity whether if you want to get into the contract or simply you quit you lose only the premium wherein in this case suppose the stock price actually falls down to $20 the loss will increase but here even if the stock price falls to $20 the loss will only be $8 because and this is why options contract is useful in the overall derivatives market okay so hopefully now you have a clear idea that the person who is buying that is long call he has the right to buy okay long call has the right to buy the stock or the underlying asset at time t if it is profitable he will do so if it is not he will simply lose the premium that he has paid to the short now we also have some other option and that is the put options okay why do we use put options i mean suppose you have an asset you already have this stock that is the abc and you feel that this is going to go down from 120 now you want to protect the losses okay so suppose you are a risk manager or a or a portfolio manager and uh, you have a, a huge portfolio and you want to protect uh, protect it from the downfall in prices you want to protect the losses in that particular for portfolio well what can you do in that situation if you feel that something is going to go down you can buy a put option so if you are a long put that means who is buying the put option you get the right to sell the stock at the exercise price which is referred to as x but you are not obligated to get into the contract at time t okay so it's a great uh, option that 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 the long has and let's see how it works with the help of an example so as i said you have to pay put premium okay it's written as p0 this is something that you have to pay since you are getting the power to choose at the end uh, to the short also known as the writer okay now so i'm gonna so we're gonna take the examples in again two scenarios here so this is scenario one uh, under which we have this stock that is 120 we already own this stock today we have the stock of abc and after so it's a three months now the expiration is three months we are waiting for three months and let's see what happens so after three months the price of stock is 80 so it has actually fallen down to 80 now 
if this is your portfolio okay you have something for 120 and it has fallen to 80 dollars so it's a loss of 40 dollars directly right you couldn't do anything i mean you cannot control the market right but if you if you buy a put option okay if you buy a put option you just pay the premium at the beginning okay which is in our case is three months so it's a three months put is available for ten dollars so we are just paying ten dollars at the beginning okay for the same uh, underlying which is the abc corporation for the same stock but we have an option to decide at time t to get in the contract to exercise our options right or not okay so let's see what happens so at time t which is three months the strike price is 115 the x is 115 now this is the price at which we will buy or sell okay so the stock price at time t is given as after three months the price of stock is 80 so yes so we have the stock price as 80 the exercise price is 115 now pay attention here i have bought the put option that means i have the right to sell okay i have the right to sell at x at the exercise price so the exercise price is 115 that means that i can sell something in the market for 115 whereas the same thing is selling for 80 dollars so you get the logic i can sell the abc company for 115 dollars when everyone is selling for 80 dollars right so with this thing and who will buy the short so what i will do is i will sell I will sell the ABC for 115 to the short because he is the one who is selling it to me. So I will sell it to him for 115. I will make my profit. So in this situation, we are not in a loss. We are in a profit of 115 minus 80, 35 dollars. So we are in a profit of 35 and this is something that we already paid that this went out of our pocket so i will also reduce this thing so overall we are in a profit of 25 dollars rather than a loss of 40 dollars so do do you see the difference here if we keep our portfolio unprotected from the fluctuations of the prices we can have a profit or a loss but if we buy a derivative and here we are, we are purchasing the put options and if our view is right that the stock price will fall down at this point i am protecting my portfolio okay so this is why we use the call options and the put options in the derivatives market because it gives us the option at time t to decide whether to continue or to exit so hopefully you are clear